Hey guys, how's it going? This is the first Q&A video. I am Chitanshu from Dream Abroad. In this video, I'll be answering so many questions that you people asked on Facebook and YouTube. So without wasting any more time, let's start this video. Okay, so let's kick off this first Q&A session with the first question. Can we use one IELTS scorecard for both Australia and Canada? While registering for the test, we need to enter the country. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we can use the same IELTS score for both Australia and Canada. Uh, I did it in my times. It's, I've got a very interesting immigration story to tell you guys. I'll definitely make a video for that. A lot many people have requested for that. Anyways, uh, we can definitely uh, you know, use the same scorecard for both Australia and Canada. And I'm, I know that we do enter the, um, the country name where we are actually willing to immigrate. But I think that is just for their own you know, knowledge or they might be you know, making their own database. That, is for, uh, that might be something for them. I'm pretty sure we can definitely uh, you know, use the same IELTS score for both of these countries. Okay, now the next question. Can we use employee provident fund statement as a proof of fund? Okay, that's a very normal question. Many people ask this question. So I made a special video on uh, proof of funds where I provided all the information. I'll provide the link in the I button above. To answer this question, yes, we can definitely use the uh, provident fund of, as proof of funds. We have to furnish the um, provident fund statement or the provident fund certificate. I don't remember as such exactly what that uh, what that uh, letter is called, but we don't have to furnish uh, that letter just in order to prove that we are actually, we do actually have that you know amount of money with us. Okay, next question. If we'll immigrate to Canada, do we have to study there to be eligible for a good job there? No, I don't think so. And definitely when you get the PR, I mean, if you're actually applying as a, a permanent resident, in that case, you can live, work or study anywhere in Canada. So if, I mean, if you do get a job, if you're in IT, it will be very easier for you. I don't know where, um, I mean, which is your segment, which is your sector rather uh, for job, but definitely you can actually, you know, you don't have to study, you don't have to think about studying for getting a job. But yes, if we do, uh, you know, add some uh, Canadian courses or Canadian, uh, you know, studies to your uh, resume, it would be an add-on and it would be easier for you to get a job. Okay, next question. We are trying to get the Canadian job through portal, through the job portal, but we have not processed for PR visa yet. Can it be possible that first we'll uh, get the job offer and then we can process for PR? I know the chances are very less, but please share your experiences so that we can take the right decision in action. Okay, now so many people actually uh, want to know about the job, if we can get the job, uh, you know, living in our own country without the uh, PR or the work permit. You know, this might break your heart, but let me tell you that it's very, very, very difficult, like kind of next to impossible. I won't say next to impossible, but it's very difficult to uh, get the job without a PR, visa or a work permit any you know any job you go to apply they'll you know ask if you're actually eligible to up work in the region you're actually applying for so it's very difficult uh, to get a job however i'm not saying it's impossible there are chances that you can actually get a job if you want you can actually you know i'll provide the link in the to the another video in the i button above here you can check out the you know major job portals and you know all you can also apply for the jobs and good luck with that, your job search. But I tell you, it might be, you know, it definitely would be very difficult. Okay, moving on. Next question. What are the differences between offer of employment, employment records and letter of employment? There, there seem like many overlapping areas. My offer of employment is different from what IRCC requires. Should I prepare another one besides the letter of employment? Okay. So IRCC ideally it requires only the reference letter. Okay, that reference letter should have your job duties mentioned. That is the most important thing, uh, which should be matching with the NOC code you actually chose. Also, it should mention your uh, your job uh, description, uh, also your 
your work hours, you know, your designation in the company, how long have you been working for, what's your gross salary, you know, points like that, you can check that out. So, uh, however, offer of employment, deployment records, these are not, these are just the additional um, kind of documents which are required. I can say there are other documents as well, like, you know, offer, like you said, offer of employment. So, you know, offer letter, as we say, joining letter, promotion letters, salary slips, uh, and other you know certifications all these kind of documents will only add on to your uh, resume so I would definitely requ recommend you to um, to give that with the reference letter mind it reference letter is the foremost thing you should definitely provide that okay moving on I wanted to know once we get the PR do we need to come to Canada to search for job or please let us know no sorry please let us how we can search from India and get the job confirmation also can you tell us who is sponsored without referral it is is it hard to get a job in Canada it would be great if you can tell us about kids schooling and a good school in any provision okay so there are a couple of questions over here so the first question is about the job getting the job again I would be saying that it's very difficult but now this question is probably about uh, after getting the PR and you're not there in Canada so you have the COPR with you now you at least have the status now you stand a greater chance of uh, getting a job right however till it is like still less probable if you're there and physically in Canada you know probably any employer who is actually going to appoint you would love to meet you so it is uh, but still you, you now have a greater chance to uh, get a job after you get the confirmation of PR uh, who is the sponsor without referral is it hard to get a job in Canada it's it's the same case everywhere you know uh, it's not specific to Canada however in Canada they call a lot about they talk a lot, lot about the Canadian experience I'll make a different video on it a complete different video on it so uh, the next question is the kids schooling and a good school in any uh, provision I guess uh, she meant province so uh, Yes, there are good schools everywhere, you know, there are private schools and public schools. You should actually, you know, think of uh, getting your job first and then moving on, you know, finding a home near to your office and then probably start looking for your job uh, for the, the kids school in that area nearby. Okay, next question. Most of the time candidates are confused with NOC code. How to proceed if they don't found exactly matching code for their skill set? So, if you're not finding the exact matching code for their skill set, you can, what you can do is you can actually, you know, find the most, you know, the job, the NOC code, which is actually matching with your job duties. So, if not all, at least 70 to 80% job duties should match. You should pick the right, the closest match for your uh, job duties, actually. Okay. Can a PR holder spouse work? For the spouse to work, for anybody to work actually, they should have a work permit. So somebody who's actually waiting for the uh, dependent PR can actually apply for an open work permit. That's an, also an option. I'll try to make a video on this. Uh, this is a you know very good topic. Thank you for this question. How to get job in Canada when I'm in India? There is job available for textile weaving job. I think I've answered this question. From next time onwards, I'll try to club those questions and you know so that I can answer them in the one go. I'm coming to Canada, but I have no one who can receive me. What to do? There's no need for anybody to receive you, my dear friend Vikram. Uh, yes, I made a video on what you should do actually before coming to Canada and what you should do immediately after what you should expect at the airport. So if your question is regarding the first day, which it seems so, so in that case you can definitely. Uh, you know check out that video where you can get the caps from if you're arriving in Toronto so I made a video for uh, the Toronto uh, you know interna international airport okay okay next question is it worth leaving India and opt for Canadian PR without a job having know that you may or may not get a job matching your skills in Canada and you're already working in an MNC here in India okay so I think it's about the risk right it depends on from one person to the other if you are a risk taker you can go for it I believe uh, you know many people would agree with me here that at some stage of your life you do have to take some risk if you are 
willing to uh, you know achieve your goals and li live the life of your dreams so i know so many people who have actually you know who are already well settled in their home countries they went to canada and they got their jobs some people don't get the jobs as well there's a uh, but you know many people if you're capable enough you do get the job very very personal example of my sister she was well settled in india she came to canada and now she's uh, working over here doing her core job so i do believe that it's definitely worth it there's one more example i can you know give you people spend so much amount of money you know they leave the job and go to you know western countries like uh, us uk you know germany or even australia they do spend so much money uh, in studying that is a big risk actually they are taking right they do you know take loans of 40 50 lakh rupees and they do immigrate uh, um, you know just to study further and they do find the job after that so it's just the, that amount of risk it's even a lesser risk which you are taking at this moment because you are only spending around 6 to 7 lakhs or maybe 10 lakhs in the entire process if you are a big family okay moving on i am unmarried but we are a family of three siblings elder brother younger sister if I got PR, can I move with them as family? So, I'm afraid that you don't get the PR for your siblings uh, in case you are the primary applicant. You can get the PR for your spouse and your children, but not the siblings, not also for the parents. Uh, you do have to apply uh, your, you know, there's a different visa for the parents. You can definitely apply it later on, but not for the, uh, for the siblings they can only you know apply for the pr later on they can get additional 15 points if you are a permanent resident of canada by then but you cannot apply for the uh, you know they, you cannot move with them as the permanent resident they cannot be the permanent resident if you get the uh, pr that is not a criteria okay can i have your email id i know that what uh, whatsapp number will be annoying can i suggest you even you can charge but i am sure your opinion will be more honest than other consultants and your guidance will pave many successful career for those aspiring dream abroad okay so i get so many uh, queries on uh, uh, for my email id for my mobile number but i want to tell you that i don't provide uh, to anyone i don't i haven't provided anyone my personal you know mobile number or my whatsapp number or my email id there's a special reason behind that because I do have a full-time job as well and uh, I do make uh, videos you know after I come back from office so it's not it's really not possible for me to make videos now I would make kind of daily videos uh, for you guys so I try to answer you I mean the generic questions through those videos I try to answer the questions through the uh, in, in the comment section actually I've made a you know Facebook group for Canada aspirants so you know uh, that's got a that's got a phenomenal response and people actually are helping each other uh, grow with their queries but i don't actually you know provide uh, the email id or any personal information about uh, myself because i'm sure that i won't be able to handle that much stuff you know it will be very annoying for you if i provide you my email id and i don't reply you and i don't want to do that so that's the reason next question is there any specific procedure to process the PR for applicant including his family members who are not going with him right now which is better process to PR including family or the candidates moving right now okay so I don't know what do you exactly mean by the family members here I did make a video if you uh, want to see you can check out this link in the I button above as I told just you know a couple of minutes back that we can only apply the PR for our parents uh, later on after can we after we get the uh, permanent residence and we can apply for the PR you know for our spouse and for our children as well but that is something which we can do at the same time when we are applying our PR so I'm not very sure about your question here sorry about that uh, which are the best places to settle in Canada which places should we avoid how to book apartments before moving okay so the best places to settle I mean it depends uh, what your choice actually is you know there are many factors which you should actually consider uh, Toronto actually is the 
popular you know most popular uh, city where do actually where most the uh, immigrants actually go vancouver montreal ottawa there are so many places which you should choose there should you should choose actually the best city for you in terms of job opportunities in terms of weather if you've got a you know friend or relative over there he, he or she can help you settling over there so these are the points which you should actually consider i'm not sure which you points you should actually avoid how to book an apartment i'll definitely make a video on it on the complete video on how to uh, book an apartment before moving okay next question is about the crs score my crs score is a little low should i make the express entry profile so you should definitely make the express entry profile this it is free of cost if you have given your uh, ielts and also got the wes report then you should definitely make your profile at least can i apply for pnp as sometimes they select on low score too so let me tell you that uh, if you're applying for pnp they don't generally you know most of these streams they don't actually pick you on the basis of your um, crs score they do actually you know most of the pnp programs they do have their own eoi system you can go to their websites and uh, you know you can create your expression of interest based on the points you do score in their pnp system you would actually be invited so it, if you are applying for pnp systems for pnp programs then your crs score might not matter a lot or um, do i need to improve your my score first okay so in case you do have a scope of increasing your score you should definitely do, do that i think the only scope would be the english test or the uh, french test if you are actually aware of french you should definitely try and improve your uh, crs score talk about the racism in canada especially towards indians and muslims i am an indian you know i've got so many muslim friends i haven't seen anybody you know bullying anyone else on the base of you know racism you know skin color religion anything like that i have never seen this happening in canada you know it might be a case that you know these cases do happen but i have never seen it and uh, this is the best thing about canada you know i've everybody has heard some or the other news about racism in australia but i've never heard a uh, news in newspapers or in televisions about racism in canada as such okay most people that apply for pr are planning to go to canada for work my girlfriend and me want to apply to get a pr to study first and then get a job is it advisable is it advisable to do this way does a degree in canada help in job searching afterwards so i think i did answer this similar question in the same q and a session you can definitely go after getting your pr you can live work or study in canada anywhere in canada and uh, this will definitely help you getting a job if you have a canadian degree or you know if you've done any canadian courses this definitely acts as a, a boost you know it actually improves the weightage of your resume and it will definitely help you get a job people say once you get pr one might still not end up with jobs as one does not have canadian relevant canadian experience how true is that canadian experience as stupid as it may sound but it is true i really don't know why do we, do the employers actually look for canadian experience there's no there's no specific reason for that but they do talk a lot about canadian experience if even you have uh, one year of canadian experience it adds, it adds a lot to your uh, resume some people think that you know working in us you know they might prefer you but they don't count it as a canadian experience some or the somehow or the other this thing is true very sad but i don't know why do they actually ask for canadian experience i'll try to make another video on it uh, what should you do to you know actually make a relevant canadian experience you should actually go for you know volunteer jobs in the initial days of your stay in canada i'll try to make a video on that do score will go down from current 440 if yes till then till when uh next question is about the noc code so i'm really want uh, i'm not the really right guy for you to tell about the noc code because it's only you who can choose the right noc code uh if you want i can uh, give you a link in the i button above you can definitely check how to find the uh, right noc code for you but about the uh, crs score so many people actually predicted last year that 2018 
will have lower CRS score than 2017. 2017, the lowest CRS score was 413 and they announced that they'll be taking one more than 1 million people uh, in the next three years. So almost everybody was predicting that, you know, the score will go down. But as this express entry program is getting more famous, more popular, uh, there are more people coming in, you know, more, you know, more people with good qualifications or more, you know, relevant experiences coming in and applying for the PR. So this is the primary reason it's not getting lower. I really cannot tell you if it will go down. But yes, if it goes down, it will help many people. I really can't tell you if it will be going down or not. Is it important to have someone who you know in Canada in order to get a job or apartment of or any help for that matter after you getting after getting your PR? Okay, yes, it does help. Definitely, uh, it does help. If you have if you know somebody in Canada, I can definitely help you get an apartment to settle down in the initial days to refer. Remember, contacts is the best thing. It works everywhere. If you do have contacts in Canada, you know, if you do have relevant contacts in your in your job sector, you can definitely they can refer you internally. They can they can uh, at least you can they can arrange a job interview for you. So definitely it does help. Is there any chances of draws to come down to 421, bro? I'm really sorry. I don't think so that it would uh, you know come down to 421 so soon because it's at 440 and uh, it's from the last three doors i guess it is being stable at 440 if it even comes down it may come down two or three points or even to maybe to 435 but not 420 or 421. may i know when cell pip is available in hyderabad if yes is this applicable for canadian uh, canadian pr they haven't announced anything about it they have just one center they had their first uh, they had their first test uh, in Chandigarh in India uh, this was their first test in India so they haven't announced it I'm not very sure if they'll have it in Hyderabad they might or they might not but yes this will be applicable for the Canadian PR if I become able to apply in the express entry pool then how much time will it take to get the ITA from them okay so it's about the um, ITA if you do have a good score let's say somewhat over 440 you'll definitely get the ita within 10 to 15 days within you know whenever the next draw actually happens but just in case if you don't have the you know score above 440 or you know in that range then in that case it might take you know a very long time whenever the score actually comes down then you can also uh, have the option of uh, applying for any pnp program can I apply for the training program in the USA while waiting for COPR? The training will take place in spring 2019. I mean, whether Express Entry can require extra docs, which I should get in my home country. I'm not very sure, you know, of the stage where you are actually of the Canadian Express Entry process. If you have already applied with all your documents, there's there are very little chance that you will actually be asked again for any of those documents and if you do get asked again about those documents I can't say which document can that be so in that case you should have all those documents with you handy when you're traveling to US or you should you know arrange someone in your home country uh, who should you know help you with those documents if in case they do uh, call for those documents again Possibilities of the same PR process and the same amount of immigration intake three four years down the line from now So prediction I am very bad in predictions. I don't want to do any of these predictions. I'm not a very you know specialist in that but yes uh, Looking at the current behavior it might get a bit difficult You know three or four years down the line because if I see in the case of Australia it was very easy like three or four years be before but now it is getting difficult every year they are increasing like five points it might get difficult in the coming years last year in 2017 it was a lot easier the score went down to 413 but this year 440 is the least score so you know three four years down the line they would definitely continue this process they might name it in a different way or they might you know change the process a little bit but they would definitely be the uh, immigration process will definitely continue but it might get a bit difficult employment reference letters for each one for each job one reference letter is required right yes 
Can reference letters also be taken from a previous senior who is currently not working in the company? Could this be as a main reference letter or as a supporting one? There's nothing like as a supporting reference letter. Uh, you should have, I mean, if the company is actually providing you with the reference letter on the on the letterhead, that's the best thing to do. Uh, but if in case you can't arrange that, you should actually arrange it from somebody who's who's actually working in that company. Now, your question is, who's currently not working in that company, it's better to get the reference letter from someone who is actually working in that company so that just in case they call, they can at least talk to you know somebody who's actually you know working still working over there in that company so if not if you don't have any option then you know we can go with this option also you know if he or she can actually arrange that i card of that same uh, company or you know something something to prove that they were actually working in that company that would be very helpful after you get the pr and land in canada how tough is it to get a job it is definitely tough i won't say that it is you know it is very tough but it is tough but it might differ from one person to the other, from you know one job sector to the other, from one you know from one city to the other. There are so many parameters involved. But I won't say it's tough. Uh, I won't say it's you know very easy. But it's it's tough. But you know almost everybody who goes there, they get a job. You know they settle down. It takes time, but you will definitely settle down, get a job, and uh, you know start your living. I am planning to create my profile next month. I am single but in January I am going to get married now my question is can I change my status after creating my profile and my husband can accompany me to Canada okay so you can definitely modify and update your express entry profile but you should make sure that you know you do update it as soon as uh, possible I mean as soon as after you get uh, married but there will be a change in points you should you know make sure that your your husband actually appears for the IELTS test so that you can you know you can get more points because as soon as you update your profile with your marriage I'm sure there'd be small reduction in your uh, total points so it would be difficult for you to get the uh, permanent residence or the ITA so in that case you should definitely ask your uh, future husband to appear for IELTS uh, if it's if you're getting married in the month of January in that case you should definitely ask him to appear for the IELTS in the upcoming months so that he can you can use it as soon as you you know update your profile okay so I think there were so many questions this was a very long video and I'm sure I've I haven't answered too many questions that you guys actually you know asked me uh, on the post on YouTube and Facebook I'm really sorry I can't cover all those questions in one video I would be definitely making more of these Q&A videos I'm pretty sure it would be helpful for you guys looking at the response the number of questions which you were asking it was really overwhelming the response was overwhelming thank you so much for all your love and support I would definitely try to make you know one video in one week or every 10 days please you know ask your questions there's so many questions still unanswered I can pick those questions from uh, that uh, from the from those posts in YouTube and Facebook if you haven't joined the Facebook uh, group yet, please join it so that you can get you know answers of most of your queries to uh, that group. Thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, video. Please subscribe this channel if you haven't subscribed it. Like it if you really liked it and share it with your friends if you think it will be useful for them.